homemade country gravy. So tonight I'm going to show you. So we're going to do the thin meat version that my kids were raised with. So you can use sausage if you want to do it, but today we're going to do thin meat. So we're going to start out, I'm going to show you a few ingredients. So we're going to move over here and this is thin meat and I would advise you to buy Carl Buddig, that's B-U-D-D-I-G, thin meat ham and it's in a little two ounce package. Walmart was out so I had to substitute this Hillshire Farms but you cut up two ounces of that. We use Miss Mary B's Southern Made Biscuits or Buttermilk Biscuits, whichever you prefer. They're easy to use and they're as good as you can make so no special family secret to that. So the very first thing we're going to do is cut up this ham and it's very easy. You just cut it up in little strips like this. Turn it around and just go the other way. So make sure you preheat your oven and with about seven or eight minutes left go ahead and start making your gravy. So start making the gravy. Oh well first of all we should say what other ingredients are in the gravy. So I can write them down for you but they are four cups of whole milk, one cup one stick or a half a cup of butter and we may have to add a little more butter depending on how the flour pastes up. Half a cup of flour, one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of black pepper to start. Okay, so here we go. We're going to turn on the fire and we're going to put in a stick of butter. Make sure you have a wooden spoon to do this with. <laughs> Okay, we're back on the air, <laughs> and the butter is melting. While this butter is melting, I'm going to slide this ham in there so we can start getting some of the flavors into the butter and into the ham. Just stir it around. You don't want this to get too hot. You want your basic roux here to be not dark so you don't want it to get dark in color so you don't want it to get too hot just now when that cooks up for just a minute or so we're going to add the flour and see if we have enough butter in here we want it to get dark in color so you don't want it to get too hot now when that cooks up for just a minute or so, we're going to add the flour and see if we have enough butter in here. We may have to add a little bit. Once it starts frying good and you can see it's starting to bubble pretty good. Now we're going to add our flour. Just use a non-stick skillet, keep it stirred up, and we're going to add our flour. We're going to stir it and see what consistency we have here. And I think it's just going to be just about right. You can see it just absorbed the flour with just a little moisture left over. You let that cook just a minute to get the flour to cook a little bit to get the flavors mixed in and we're going to add the salt and the pepper All right, you can see it's starting to turn a little bit of a different color and right now is when you want to, want to add your milk because you don't want it to get much darker than that Now you just got to let it reheat. And just keep stirring it a little bit. Sometimes when you first put the milk in it will be a little bit lumpy. That's okay. Those lumps will cook out as you stir it. So don't worry about that. 
just let it reheat and once it starts bubbling it'll start to thicken up and as any good cook will tell you the whole key to any food is seasoning so you have to even though it's just sort of lukewarm milk you taste it to see if it's got enough flavor and I think that's going to be pretty close but everybody likes different amounts of salt and of pepper and you can add that at the end so now we're just going to wait just a few minutes it just takes a few minutes it'll start bubbling all right now you can see it's starting to boil a little bit around the edge that's when you want to make sure you start stirring it good so it doesn't stick especially if your pan is and then you just stir it gently Whitney so you don't <laughs> splash it everywhere <laughs> so as you can see when you pull this back you can feel it with your your spoon that there's flour thickening on the bottom and you can tell by just stirring it so you just let it go and get it to the consistency that you want it. Some people like a little thicker gravy, some people like a little thinner gravy. And then just make sure you're ready to eat when the gravy's done because within about three to four minutes, the gravy develops a, a really small film on top of it. And it doesn't bother me at all, but I had a, an uncle that would not eat gravy once it got that film on it, but it's fine. So there you go. I hope you enjoy it now. If you do want to make sausage gravy, the only thing you would do different is to fry up two sausage patties, get them done, take them out, chop them up really fine, and you'll have a little sausage grease in your skillet instead of butter. So then you could either add vegetable oil or butter to your sausage grease, and it's probably a quarter cup, or in this case, then it'd be a half a stick of butter, and uh, then just add your flour just like everything else, then put your sausage back in, and you have sausage gravy instead of thin meat gravy.